Ah, sleep. There's nothing better than a nice, long, uninterrupted... Ugh, I can't sleep when there's... But you ever notice, noise doesn't wake everyone. Now scientists have a better idea why. Because sound sleepers show a certain brain rhythm when they doze. Findings published in the journal Current Biology. To study the brain waves of a good night's sleep, scientists invited volunteers to snooze in the lab. While the subjects caught some Zs, the researchers monitored their brain activity. They then subjected the sleepers to more. And they found that those who were able to slumber straight through all the showed more short bursts of faster brain waves. This activity, the scientists say, is the brain's way of blocking out the and the while you're trying to rest. The scientists don't yet know of any way to boost those sleep-saving brain waves, so until then, shut the door, make sure the late show's on a timer, and try to have sweet dreams. Hillary is undecided. Obama and McCain both passed, but the scientific community is committed to staging a candidate's debate about science and technology. They want straight talk on political buzzwords like climate change and stem cells, as well as less discussed issues like funding for basic research and the National Institutes of Health. What started as citizens worried about the U.S. losing its edge is now a movement called Science Debate 2008. An article in the current issue of the journal Science claims that by 2010, 90% of the world's scientists and engineers will live in Asia, where research is well-funded. The authors say the U.S. needs to keep up because science and engineering drove half of America's economic growth over the last 50 years. Science Debate 2008 had to cancel a debate before the upcoming Pennsylvania primaries because candidates wouldn't commit. Now plans are already in the works for Oregon, where primaries are set for May 20th. It's proof, the journal article says, that scientists can be quickly organized when motivated, if only politicians shared that motivation. How many times has your mother told you to turn off the lights when you leave a room, or to close the fridge door while you decide what to eat? Well, climatologists are on her side, because according to a study in the Proceedings of the National Academy of Sciences, reducing global carbon emissions should begin at home. Even if politicians manage to pass climate change legislation, it could be years, or even decades, before those policies start to make a difference. In the meantime, scientists say, there are things we can all do to shrink our carbon footprint. 
You've heard most of them before, everything from insulating your home and using low-flow showerheads to driving more efficient vehicles and carpooling to the office. But these things really work. Based in part on how folks responded to the energy crisis in the 70s, the scientists calculated how many Americans might be willing to reform their energy-wasting ways. And they found that within 10 years, we could reasonably expect to cut our national emissions by 7.4%. That much carbon is slightly larger than the total amount put out by France. If we could manage that, the whole world might say merci. The term pygmy usually refers to a few groups of short-statured people in equatorial rainforest regions in Africa. The existence of distinct populations of such people presented scientists with the opportunity to study the mechanisms by which typical human growth patterns have become altered there, and they discovered that two groups became small in two different ways. The study is in the journal Nature Communications. The researchers collected data on some 500 members of a West African ethnic group called the Baka. They discovered that Baca infants have a similar size range to most other infants, but have a low growth rate during their first two years, which produces a lasting effect. This mechanism seems to be different from that of East African groups called the Efe and the Sua. These peoples have slow prenatal growth so that the infants are born smaller. The researchers say that the Baca population appears to have split from the Efe and Sua some 20,000 years ago. The two different systems for achieving small stature, which appears to be advantageous in the equatorial rainforest environment, are thus an example of convergent evolution. The researchers believe the findings say something important about human evolution and development in general. Quote, Homo sapiens could therefore be characterized by its high capacity for growth plasticity during infancy. This capacity, which may be unique to our species, may have played a fundamental role in the biological adaptation that enabled its worldwide expansion and occupation of dissimilar environments within a short period after moving out of Africa. It's an approach to pest control that's so crazy it just might work. Convince the females that they're virgins. It would be useless as human birth control, of course, but the difference is that most female insects completely change their behavior after sex. For example, some mosquitoes suck blood, others lose interest in males, and start laying eggs. What's behind this dramatic change in behavior? Turns out it's a peptide in the male's seminal fluid. And now researchers in Vienna have found the female's receptor for this peptide. 
They report online in Nature that fruit flies without the receptor lay many fewer eggs and continue to be interested in sex. In other words, they act. So back to pest control. Most female insects should have this sort of receptor, including the kinds that spread disease and devastate crops. If we could deactivate it on a large scale, instead of fighting egg-laying bloodsuckers, we could live in peace with born-again virgins. Olive oil is thought to be healthy because it's mostly monounsaturated fat, but cold-pressed extra virgin olive oil may have an extra benefit. It appears to be more filling than other fats. That's according to research presented at a German symposium on fat. Researchers started by feeding 120 volunteers a daily 18-ounce serving of low-fat yogurt, but mixed in the yogurt were three tablespoons of either extra virgin olive oil, canola oil, butter, or lard. Turns out volunteers in the olive oil group reported feeling more full during the three-month study period, and they had larger concentrations of serotonin in their blood, a signal of satiety. The researchers say extra virgin olive oil contains aromatic compounds that block the absorption of glucose from the blood, delaying the recurrence of hunger. Indeed, study subjects who ate yogurt with just olive oil extract consumed fewer calories over a three-month period than those who ate plain yogurt, and they finished the trial with less body fat too. Which leads these researchers to conclude that olive oil extract could be key to creating a better low-fat snack. Tastes great, more filling. Our health care is too costly, and each day brings further evidence that the ways we use energy strengthen our adversaries and threaten our planet. We will build the roads and bridges, the electric grids and digital lines that feed our commerce and bind us together. We will restore science to its rightful place and wield technology's wonders to raise health care's quality and lower its cost. We will harness the sun and the winds and the soil to fuel our cars and run our factories, and we will transform our schools and colleges and universities to meet the demands of a new age. Our challenges may be new. The instruments with which we meet them may be new. But those values upon which our success depends, honesty and hard work, courage and fair play, tolerance and curiosity, Loyalty and patriotism, these things are old. These things are true. <laughs> 